if this episode teaches us anything is to always brush your teeth and use a broom. It's better. Hello everyone and welcome back to a new Attack on Titan video covering what I used to call the broken chapter. Back when it was out, the chapter had some strange vibes and a very fast pacing and that was also apparent in this episode. But besides for pacing issues and a few ridiculous faces, we also have some very deep and meaningful moments. So no worries, we are going to talk about everything right now. Smash that subscribe button if you haven't already and let's talk about this week's episode, Pride, covering chapter 126 of the manga entirely. This episode starts with Hanji hunting some scouts in the forest. These were the last soldiers that were dispatched to kill them. Naturally, it is very hard on Anji to kill her own people, but to remind you, this is not the first time they were on the run. On the third season, the scouts were hunted down by the military police in the same way. But back then, they had Levi with them, and things were, of course, a lot different. Levi is still alive, and Hanji points out that this is possible only because he is an Ackerman, because clearly, no normal human could survive this kind of blast. Another mention to the third season was Hanji remembering what Sanes told her before. Sanes was the military police officer who was part of torturing Pastor Nick. After the uprising, he left Hanji with a warning that someday the scouts will find themselves on the wrong side of the conflict, just like he was trying to do what he believed was the right thing, but in the end he found himself in jail. Hanji reflects on his words and wonders if this is simply their time after being in control of the island, maybe it's their time to end up as Sanas did. Especially because things are looking pretty terrible right now. There isn't a way out of this and Hanji thinks about the option of running away and living in the forest with Levi. Now that would be an incredible spin-off. The forest life of Hanji and Levi. But soon after, Hanji also experienced Eren's message and at the same time, Levi wakes up. Something that the anime didn't make clear enough is that Levi was also part of that experience as we can see from this panel. And you gotta love Levi. The first thing on his mind is where is that damn monkey? He looks at his missing fingers and in the manga we got a small glimpse of how he survived, trying to protect part of his body using his blade. That was also why his fingers were cut right off. He tells Hanji that he heard her talking to herself. They can't just run away, because that would not contribute to anything. He acknowledges the little cart Hanji has been building. Hanji just can't stay out of the action. And we jump straight to where our previous episode ended, with Hanji and Levi facing Magath and Peek. Fun fact, that was the first time Peek's last name was mentioned, and her full name is Peek Finger. Here Magath had a real hard decision to make. Right now, he has the biggest threat of the island right in front of him. He heard about Levi from Zeke and he knows all about the Ackermans and how dangerous they can be. The easy thing for him to do is to dispose of Levi at this point when he is unable to fight back. Levi admits that he wouldn't be able to dodge any bullets in his condition, but he also points out that they have much bigger issues now. He also mentions that his main goal now is to kill Zeke. By the way, I love the respect Peek showed Hanji when calling her doctor. Hanji explains that Zeke was swept by Eren and the founding titan because he was needed for his royal blood. That means that the original connection between them might still be active inside Eren's huge titan. Hanji says that if they want to win this fight, they must do it together. And the group decides to join forces. We have a short scene of our friends across the island trying to get some sleep while titans are still marching outside. And we can especially see how Jean and Mikasa feel lost, while Gabi and Armin are on their way to Connie's village. In a nearby forest, Connie has his moment of doubt. He knows Falco is a good kid, and he followed him without question. But now, he is about to sacrifice a kid, and he cries to Sasha, asking if she is the only one who could understand him right now. He also doesn't even know how to actually do what he meant to do. He can't hurt Falco to not trigger his titan transformation, so how would he feed him to his mom? Connie is a terrible liar, and we will see this real soon. Morning comes and Connie and Falco reach Ragako village, but to Connie's surprise, Falco knows where they are. He heard Connie talking to himself last night, and he also heard Sasha's name. Falco finally remembers where he met Connie before, and he asks Connie if he brought him here for revenge. 
Connie tells him that he knows that was part of a war and is not after hurting Falco. He walks to a little tent and reveals his Titan mom to Falco's surprise. Here we see exactly how terrible of a liar Connie is when he puts on what I can only describe as the most disingenuous smile ever. It was so ridiculous that I actually think Isayama aimed for that specific meme. Connie figured out that he would make Falco brush his mom's teeth and then he would just push him down. And look at poor Falco, he knows something is wrong. At that moment, Gabby and Armin reach the village and Gabby screams for Falco to get away, but Connie grabs him and goes up the ladder. She tells him to use his titan, but clearly Falco doesn't even know he has the jaw titan and also he doesn't know what happened to Porco. In the latest episode, Armin told Mikasa that Erwin should have lived instead of him. And here we see how broken Armin is at this moment. He asks Gabby to forgive Connie and then he uses the ODM gear to climb on top of the Titan. He tells Connie that he will show him his intentions through his actions and he sacrifices himself, jumping down into the Titan's mouth. But at the last second, Connie leaves Falco and swoops down to save his friend. And look how disappointed Connie's mom is, she almost became the new colossal Titan. Connie realizes that what he tried to do would have caused his mom more suffering making her a titan shifter and also sacrificing a young child for her sake. And that is something she would never want him to do. He promised his family he would return home as a great soldier, but instead he almost killed a kid and his close friend. This is the kind of soldier he became and he feels ashamed of himself. He tells Armin he wants to become a soldier his mom would be proud of and he could do that if he dedicated his heart to saving people from now on. From there, we go to what I believe is one of the hardest scenes of this episode, when Mikasa walk out during Louise's final words. First thing about this moment, we see that Eren asked Louise to throw away the scarf. This was one of Eren's attempts to keep Mikasa away from him, along with the famous chat when he told her he hated her. Louise is currently suffering from internal damage and she is slowly dying. She won't get to see the new world that Eren will create for them. She refused to throw away Mikasa's scarf and she asks if she can keep it. This girl probably has only a few hours to live, but Mikasa immediately tells her to give it back to her. Louise tells her she is the reason she became a soldier, because she admired Mikasa since the day she saved her. She has no regrets because she chased Mikasa and followed her dreams and while she still speaks, Mikasa leaves the room. This scene was here to emphasize Mikasa's internal conflict. The man she loves just told her he hated her. She doesn't know what she is fighting for and she doesn't know what to do. And then this kid tells her she is proud for following in her footsteps, while Mikasa herself doesn't even know what she believes in anymore. Mikasa couldn't listen to someone on her deathbed legitimizing her while she doesn't believe in herself at that specific moment. That made her walk away in her face, mid-sentence, which was very cold, but I bet that Mikasa felt bad about that later on. Meanwhile, the Jaegerists celebrate Eren's actions to save the island, and even Jean seems like he decided to join forces with the island's new command. All over the streets, we see people celebrating their victory. Our group decides to stop for some snacks before they go and pick up Reiner, and completely by chance, they get to sit right next to Annie. We didn't have enough time to recover from Connie's stupid face and we get Annie stuffing her face with pie. To remind you, the last time they met her was after she killed a lot of people, but somehow Connie's first reaction is to make fun of how she eats. But I like to believe she just reminded him of Sasha and how she used to eat and that's why he reacted this way. Hitch returns to Annie to find a note thanking Hitch and letting her know Annie continued with her friends, leaving Hitch wondering how she's going to eat all this pie alone. Back to the agorists, Flock is about to execute Yelena and Unyankupon. He points out all of Yelena's crimes, which are pretty serious. At the end of the day, she was all about the plan to sterilize all subjects of Ymir, and obviously, the people of the island don't like this idea at all. But unlike her, Unyankupon wasn't aware of this plan. He was tricked by Elena as well. But Flock thinks he deserves to die only because he refused to serve the Eldian Empire. From Elena, we see zero resistance. 
she even asks Locke when he's going to shoot her. But Unyan Kupon starts laughing nervously, telling the people that he only joined to help his homeland, but he helped Eldians as well. And because he helped, now his family is about to be killed by the rumbling, and he himself is about to be killed now by the people he tried to help. He cries to the crowd, mentioning the fact that they also suffered from a devastating attack years ago, so they should know better. He simply can't understand how they don't see they are now doing the same thing that happened to them. He turns to John, asking him to say something, but John points the gun at him and shoots four times, missing Union Coupon and eating the ground. Flock tries to understand what is going on as the cult titan suddenly appears. At the last moment, Jean pushes Flock out of the way and the cult runs away with Jean, Yelena and Union Coupon. And in one of my favorite moments of this episode, Flock immediately looking for Mikasa, because Mikasa is basically Levi at this moment, so she is the first person to call in this situation. But he soon realizes that Mikasa is not there for a reason. Now, let's stop here for a second. If any of this looks fast or disorganized to you, then you are not alone, because it makes us question, how was all of this planned? How did all of the people involved in this operation even communicate to bring out such a smooth attack? Did Hanji meet with Jean? Or maybe with Connie and Armin? This entire operation looks too organized and in very little time. Going back to the action, we see Mikasa has already teamed up with Annie and the group coming from Ragako village. They hear the gunfire which was of course Jean's signal for them to start running while everyone is focusing on the cult titan. Armin tells Mikasa they have to hurry, and while they ride away, Annie sees a mysterious character looking at them from one of the windows. Not far away, the cult titan spit out our friends, and Jean declares he will never enter a titan mouth again. And of course, Angie has to ask Peek if she ever brushes her teeth while being in titan form for so long. Peek thinks it's rude to ask a lady this question. This is the second time someone's suggesting to brush a titan teeth in this episode. Jean explains that he joined forces with Marley last night, which again brings up the question of how and when did it happen exactly. Union Coupon tells Jean that he could have just stayed with Flock and been safe. Why did it help them? And Jean tells him those burnt bones would never forgive him. Which, of course, means nothing to Onion Coupon, but a lot to us. The bones Jean is referring to are his dead friend Marco. After Marco died, we had a heartbreaking scene of Jean holding some burned bones in his hand, not knowing if they even belong to Marco. In simple words, Jean couldn't go on with the Jaegerists because he knew his friend Marco would have been disappointed in him. He tells Onion Coupon to wash himself, while Yelena finds out she was a package deal, and General Magaff specifically wanted to put his hands on her. No spoilers, but this is not the last surprise from Yelena, and we will soon get more information about her character. We go back to one of my least favorite moments in the entire story, Annie waking up Reiner with a kick to the face. That made me feel bad when I read it, and it didn't feel any better animated. This oriented Reiner doesn't understand how all of those people are actually together, but Gabby tells him they are all on the same side. And in one of the most infamous manga panels, Connie tells Reiner they are going to save the world. And the only reason I call it infamous is because this is where the Attack on Titan fandom started to split. And from now, this group, which will be called the Alliance, will start getting a lot of hate especially from people who didn't appreciate the ending. But now, it's up to you, anime watchers, to decide if you like it or not. This is where this chapter and also this episode come to an end. And even though this episode was very fast-paced, I promise you that the next one will fix everything that felt wrong in this episode, just like it was in the manga. So, what did you think about this episode? Did you like it? Or did you feel it had some issues? Let me know in the comments. Also, do you brush your teeth for the broom, or is that just me? Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, that will absolutely help me out. I will see you all real soon in my next video, and even sooner in the comments. And until then, don't forget to dedicate your hearts to humanity, inside and outside the walls.